Hey everyone, as you already know, ServiceNow's Roam comes out later this year. This video is going to highlight a couple of items that are going to be fixed, deprecated, and new to the platform. And at the end of this video, I'll be providing information on where to register early for Roam. First item we'll take a look at is encrypted text fields within the agent workspace view of an incident producing a garbled value. So as we enter agent workspace, we'll go into an incident record and you may find that there's an output of uh, something like this even though you've configured the field correctly. Next item on our list is the assign to me UI action on the problem table. This is only occurring in the list view and if you take a look here at the problem solving group I'm not a member of it yet when I navigate back to the list and try to use the UI action to add myself as the assigned to it will let me do that even though I'm not a member of the group. Moving right along within service portal the catalog and catalog categories pages are taking a long time to load in domain separated instances only. Rounding out our fixes, someone had noted that it is taking quite some time to add a report to a dashboard from within a report as you'll see here the add to dashboard option when we click on it. Here it looks fine but the user noted it is taking some time to load. Remember that you can go to your dashboard to add a report from there also. First deprecation we're going to talk about is Service 360. For those of you who've been working with ServiceNow for a while, you'll remember that this one came about in Geneva. Looks like they want customers to transition to service owner workspace. Okay, communities are gonna be the new place to be as social Q&A UI pages and artifacts are going to be deprecated. Check out communities. Bye bye risk vendor portal and hello vendor assessment portal. Automatically loaded in GRC vendor risk management version 10.0.2. Support for 32-bit mid servers is going the way of the dinosaur. I went out there to the platform to try to download a 32-bit mid server because I didn't think I could and I was right. So you might want to talk to your developers and see if there are any 32-bit mid servers out there in your organization and plan accordingly. First new feature we'll talk about is based on the acquisition by ServiceNow of a company called Sweagle about a year ago. Sweagle claims to be a solution for DevSecOps headaches, at least that's what they state on their LinkedIn. You can go out there and check it out. Looks like uh, this is going to be in Rome. There's also a video regarding Sweagle by ServiceNow out there on YouTube so you can check it out and see what the native functionality looks like for those of you who are in the DevSecOps area. And again, this is just speculation. We don't know if this functionality would be included in Rome. Next new feature is within ITOM and it concerns password to encryption for patterns. You know what that is, congratulations, because I'm not really an ITOM expert myself, but I did notice that within the key management framework, password 2 is now going to be required on Rome going forward. So again, just something to note, not sure how many of you out there actually use key management framework within ITOM, but just wanted to point that out. Moving right along. Support on discovery of tags for Azure noted here will be another new feature that is supported starting with Rome. Last new feature we'll be looking at is a change management sys property. Looks like this one sends a notification when it's set to true upon the refreshing of uh, impacted service. I haven't worked with change management in a while, not going to lie. 
So for you change management experts out there, something to get excited about. Okay, now that we're all excited about Rome, let's just take a look at a couple of resources out on the internet from the ServiceNow Support Portal. These are three KB documents that regard the early availability program, answer questions, and provide a nice timeline, who can participate, etc. So I encourage you to go out there and take a look at these if you're interested in the early release program. It'll give you some good information and also they have some nice images there that take you through the phases of the actual process itself. Next we can take a look at a KB called Early Release Program Customer FAQ. This has about 19 questions. So if you didn't get any information from the previous three, which I displayed earlier, you can take a look at this document here, which provides a bunch of information about the program itself. And it's never too early to get started. So go out there, take a look, see if it's the right fit for your organization if you want to participate. Now, if you're a partner, you'll log in to the partner portal. You might get a message like this telling you that your organization is already registered for early availability. So just wanted to show you that message right there. Automation store is a selection that we'll select within the partner portal. Then we'll navigate to service catalog and then we'll scroll down and find the early release program registration option there. As you can see here, I added it to my bookmarks and I'll select it one last time and we'll see here a message in the green box telling us thank you for your registration and a couple of timelines associated with phases. You can also find this information out there on the ServiceNow support portal. So it's not really exclusive to the partner portal. One last thing I wanted to show you was the Codeless Solutions playlist on Aspen Now. Just go out to YouTube and type in ServiceNow Codeless to find it. The playlist contains over 20 videos with Codeless Solutions. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you're as excited about Rome as I am. Click like if you learned something and don't forget to subscribe.